Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt, the First Lady of the United States, who pays Lyudmila Pavlichenko a visit at Moscow's Nukovo Airport, in 1957, and refuses to attend a ceremony commemorating her arrival in the Soviet Union. Roosevelt introduces Lyudmila to her secretary, reciting the narrative, as she provides the driver with Lyudmila's address. Later, it is recounted how Roosevelt met Lyudmila in 1942, during an international student anti-fascist assembly. Lyudmila is a student who passed the entrance examinations for Kiev State University, and the Red Army finally contacts her to become a member of the group. As Roosevelt receives the Soviet Union's pilots and army in the White House, she begins questioning Nikolai, a party worker, about his exploits in murdering opponents. She then moves on to Vladimir Pshlintsev, who identifies himself as a sniper. As Roosevelt gets to know the pilot students, Lyudmila introduces herself as Lyudmila Pavlichenko, a second lieutenant and sniper. To Roosevelt's amazement, she asks Lyudmila how many men she killed, but Lyudmila corrects her saying she killed fascists, not men. Lyudmila's military background makes her an important propaganda tool for the Soviets, who parade her around the world, to raise funding for the battle against fascism. Eventually, Lyudmila admits she killed 399 fascists during the war, prompting Roosevelt and the reporters to circle her for repeated interviews. And while everyone tries to question Lyudmila about the conflict, she has a flashback to her experience. Masha goes joyfully towards the school board in 1937, to check on the passing students on the Kyiv University exams. She fortunately notices Lyudmila's name on the page, and joyfully declares her victory. Lyudmila, despite their cheers, prefers to go home, rather than celebrate. Lyudmila's friends, on the other hand, tell her they will be waiting for her straight after class. She later asks her mother for permission to borrow her clothing. Meanwhile, Lyudmila's father, Misha, unexpectedly returns home, so she approaches him to tell the good news, but her father does not appear to be proud of her accomplishment. When she notices Misha practically stepping out the door, she instantly asks when he will return. He says not to wait for him for dinner. She interrupts her father, claiming they have already invited their neighbors to celebrate her admission, but he excuses himself to depart, and inquires about the type of party required, which Lyudmila emphasizes. Lyudmila meets her friends the next day, including her classmate, Masha. Her buddies are discussing going to a shooting range, to celebrate her entrance. Fortunately, the rest of them agree, and spend their time in the field shooting. The female pals are watching the lads compete, when Lyudmila suddenly joins them, and requests a bullet from the shooting instructor. The boys question her desire to join at first, but they are shocked after seeing her shoot the holes. Later, while she is listening to her lecturer during their lesson, a member of the school staff enters the room, and demands Lyudmila's presence. In an unexpected turn of events, her near-perfect shooting results at the range led to excellent news. She goes to the office grabbing her bag to speak with the headmaster. Following that, she receives information about the Red Army, which contacts her to enroll in a sharpshooting program within six months. She eventually organizes her belongings for her training at their home, and ignores her father's questioning concerning her school program promotion. Later, she gets absorbed with her schoolwork, while Masha obsesses over the sailors she wishes to acquire. A librarian abruptly interrupts her writing, and orders they go to the beach, but Lyudmila refuses to obey, and continues to take notes. As a result, the librarian requests Sonia's assistance, in persuading her to go, because he needs to close the library early. Masha eventually sees Kolya and Grisha at the beach, after being hit by a ball. Kolya attempts to introduce himself to Lyudmila, but she chooses to ignore him. Masha instructs Lyudmila to look at the men playing volleyball on the beach, when she notices Boris, a Jewish doctor approaching them. Sonia then departs, leaving her brother Boris and Lyudmila alone to converse. Boris unexpectedly informs Lyudmila that Sonia wants him to propose to her, after seeing her in a bikini. She first accepts Sonia's invitation to their home for dinner, to meet their parents, but when she hears about the German onslaught, she decides to leave the house, and considers joining the battle. She then goes to an opera with Boris. However, after hearing Boris suggest that she isn't fit for battle, she abruptly exits. To her chagrin, she rejects Boris, and departs to fight on the Eastern Front, in the aftermath of the German invasion. Returning to 1942, Lyudmila receives an unexpected message from Roosevelt, requesting that she live in the White House during her visit. It is revealed that journalists dubbed her Lady Death, after learning she had killed over a hundred men throughout the battle. Roosevelt notices her bravery and brains, and assists her in finding a place to stay. In the past, Lyudmila eventually joined the army to fight the Germans. Unfortunately, she experiences difficult training, 
because their comrade Major is eager to win the war, and save the other soldiers from capture. After observing Ludmila's performance sniping the target hole, the comrade Major unexpectedly chooses her to team with a grizzled veteran sniper, Makarov, during training. The battle against the Germans began later, in 1941. Ludmila executes the captain's order, by first throwing the grenade at close range, then arrow slitting the tank with armor-piercing shots, and finally killing the driver. She requests that the captain assign her to a forward flank position, so that she can fire judiciously. After a while, the attack begins, and she, although outnumbered, makes her move to follow the order. Makarov is sniping when she notices Ludmila's successful sniper in the driver's eyes. She eventually passes out, annihilating the Verizite's forces in the field. Later, a soldier announces Ludmila's tank destruction, Major General Petrik, commander of the 25 Chapayevsk Division. As a result, the general bestows upon Ludmila a semi-automatic SVT weapon. The captain teaches her how to use a gun. She is asking him whether he has a wife, when she hears Masha's voice outside, calling her name. Fortunately, she is reunited with her old classmate Masha, who became a nurse and got engaged to Grisha, a young pilot. Masha notices Makarov in the tent, and inquires whether he is her boyfriend. Ludmila informs her that he will be there shortly. Ludmila is injured while protecting the city of Odessa, helping a soldier on the battlefield. Unfortunately, she refused to obey his command to remain in post, and kept sniping the enemy. Fortunately, Masha is there to heal her wounds. Later that night, Ludmila is having supper with Masha and Grisha, when the two of them abruptly excuse themselves, leaving Ludmila alone. Following that, a man enters the tent and kisses her. While Makarov is watching them, Ludmila beats him up. She follows Makarov outside, only to discover that he is unable to reciprocate her feelings. Makarov then recounts when the Germans invaded, and he lost his family. The next day, Ludmila prepares for combat, as the Germans launch another offensive on Odessa. Unfortunately, she is injured and passes out as a result of the explosion. Makarov drags her to safety in a nearby hospital where Boris has enlisted as a military doctor. Returning to 1942, Roosevelt teaches Ludmila how to make borscht for their lunch, while staying at the White House. Ludmila is teaching Roosevelt how to pronounce borscht correctly, when she drops the pan, which causes Ludmila to panic. Roosevelt attempts to calm her down. Ludmila recovers from the explosion in Odessa, during the Sevastopol evacuation in 1941, Boris looking after her. While still on the ship, a surprise attack by German troops utilizing an airplane kills everyone on board. Boris rushes to Ludmila's aid, in order to save her. Masha is the one who discovers Ludmila, and calms her down. Boris then approaches them, and informs that it is not safe for her to return to the front. Meanwhile, in Sevastopol's headquarters, Ludmila approaches Ivan, asking him to sign her documents, and establish that she is already healthy. Ivan agrees and offers to bring her tea. As they walk inside, she learns Makarov has perished in battle, and that the Soviets are retiring to Sevastopol. She approaches Boris for assistance, and is able to persuade him to sign her paperwork, allowing her return to the front lines. When they return to the front lines, the captain pairs her with a male sniper named Leonid. Leonid experiences terror, after witnessing Ludmila wound enemy soldiers, watching them suffer, a result of her determination to avenge Makarov's death. She appears to relish killing people, firing several bullets at the enemy. As a result, Leonid reminds her that they are not fascists, and she should refrain from killing the men. Despite a rocky start, Ludmila and Leonid soon build a close bond, carrying out their goal to destroy the enemies. The next day, she rejoices over their survival in Sevastopol. They get into trouble while celebrating. After thrashing the man, Leonid unexpectedly kisses her. They unexpectedly proclaim their love for each other. Masha, the frontline nurse, calls Leonid and Ludmila the next day, to invite them to her wedding. After that, she reveals her fiancé's death. They toast Masha, while mourning Grisha's death. And as their relationship progresses, Ludmila confides in Leonid that she wishes for a son, but he keeps silent, refusing to respond in kind. Later, while they are patrolling in a field, Leonid unexpectedly steps on a mine, triggering a flare. Surprisingly, it indicates artillery fire at the pair's location. So in order to rescue themselves, they run faster, but they fail to flee the field, and tragically, Leonid dies. Ludmila carries Leonid, and calls for rescue. She awakens in a field hospital, where Boris informs her that Leonid did not survive in the ambush. Ludmila had lost another important man in her life, for the second time. Boris is attempting to calm her down, when the commander enters and instructs his troops to take Ludmila, since they need her for the front. 
Boris initially threatens him with complaining to the general, about what he's doing to her, but after hearing that it's an order that Ludmila stand on her feet, he has no choice but to follow. So despite being injured and fatigued, Ludmila is ordered to assassinate a top enemy sharpshooter, for Soviet propaganda purposes. The next day, she begins practicing her sniping skills, in preparation for her fight with the enemy sniper, but before she goes into battle, she goes to the commander, to examine the photo of the mission she's been assigned to kill. She abruptly informs the commander that she is no longer the best sniper. She claims the military doctor's assessment shows she is no longer suitable for military service. Nonetheless, the commander continues to persuade her, even claiming it is also for Leonid. She agrees and accepts the order without hesitation. She then proceeds to the spot where the enemy sniper is hiding. The duel lasts all day. Ultimately, she grows tired of waiting, and goes out of cover, entirely exposing herself. Unfortunately, the enemy shoots her. She does however manage to track down and kill the sniper. She then approaches the opponent, and discovers photographs of him and his wife. Later, when she stares at the photo, she bursts into tears, as she recalls Leonid and their almost wedding. Meanwhile, Boris travels to the general's office, to inform that the injured and distraught Ludmila must leave the city immediately. At the same time, Sevastopol is being evacuated under siege, causing citizens to panic, as they try to board the ship. Convinced, the general agrees to let Ludmila leave the city. Boris and Ludmila board the ship with the civilians later at night. As they successfully board, Ludmila understands that Boris handed her his papers to leave the city. Unfortunately, only she will be able to escape Sevastopol, leaving Boris to board the next boat. Following that, the defense of Sevastopol lasted over 250 days, and the enemy is still present. Unfortunately, there is no evacuation plan in place for military or civilians. Only the general and command officers are safely evacuated by boat. Boris Masha and countless other people and troops were killed defending the city from the Germans. Unfortunately, after fighting them, the Germans killed approximately 80,000 civilians and soldiers. Ludmila delivered her address in Chicago, Illinois, in 1942. She initially tries to embrace her femininity, wearing a frock to her New York address. However, the Soviet propaganda minister refuses to approve her request, claiming she is a Soviet soldier, not a woman. He then compels her to put on a Red Army uniform again. She introduces herself as she begins her speech, telling them how many fascists she killed during the war. To everyone's surprise, she makes an important impression on the mostly male audience, as she concludes her address saying, Don't you think, gentlemen, that you have been hiding behind my back for far too long? Ludmila receives a round of applause from the audience for her speech. She completes her university studies, and fortunately, gets the highest rank of hero of the Soviet Union medal. After 15 years, Roosevelt intends to visit Ludmila, while on a vacation to Moscow. Roosevelt concludes Ludmila's account, informing her secretary that Ludmila won as a diplomat, a soldier, and a lady. She then goes to the opera with Ludmila and her son, presuming the boy is Leonid's child. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.